Betelgeuse, a red giant in the Orion constellation, started to dim in 2019. This confused astronomers. By that time, the star had already swollen to enormous proportions. If it was to replace our Sun, its outer surface would spread far beyond Jupiter's orbit. And then Betelgeuse became dimmer in the fall of 2019. This process continued through February 2020. The changes could already be seen with the unaided eye. No wonder, the star's brightness had dipped by two-thirds. At that time, astronomers were sure Betelgeuse was about to explode into a supernova. They continued to observe the star, but unexpectedly, it returned to its regular brightness in April. Thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope, scientists figured out that the star had ejected some of its material, and this partially blocked its light. Our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy, our closest neighbor, are going to meet. But it'll happen in about 4 billion years. When they collide, an enormous elliptical galaxy will be formed. There might be more water on the moon than scientists thought before. And not only on its dark side, but also its sunlit side. This water is likely to come in handy during the already planned missions in the future. Cotton candy exoplanets are particular planets outside of our solar system. Also called super puffs, they have the lowest density ever discovered. This gives them an airy, fluffy appearance. But despite looking like the most popular amusement park treat, these planets are enormous. The Juno mission has noticed something weird in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter. The unusual phenomenon was blue sprites and elves twirling above the planet. These are two kinds of bright flashes of light that appear for short periods of time, mere milliseconds. They extend up and down toward the surface of the planet. On Earth, such flashes usually happen at a height of 60 miles above massive thunderstorms. In the universe, there are not only dwarf planets, but also dwarf galaxies. They have from 1,000 to a few billion stars. For comparison, the Milky Way galaxy is made up of 250 to 400 billion stars. A storm the size of our planet keeps raging on Saturn. It's called the Great White Spot. The storm has a tail of white clouds, and it encircles the entire planet. The storm occurs every 30 years or so, when Saturn's northern hemisphere tilts toward the sun. At first, the storm is indeed just a spot, and then it starts stretching in length. That's because the Great White Spot is a huge system of thunderstorms. But the main mystery puzzling astronomers is where the storm gets its energy from. Some scientists think it might be powered by the sun. Others disagree. And they say the storm's cloud pattern only makes sense if there's an internal heat source that can power the winds. Rogue planets don't orbit their stars, maybe because they don't have any. These free-floating space bodies travel across the universe and can end up literally anywhere. They're also very hard to find. Rogue planets don't produce light. Neither do they emit heat, which means they can't be seen in infrared light. But not so long ago, astronomers spotted the smallest rogue planet in the Milky Way. It's smaller than Earth, but a bit bigger than Mars. The moon seems to be shrinking. Earth's natural satellite is now 150 feet smaller than it used to be hundreds of millions of years ago. The reason for this phenomenon might be the cooling of the moon's insides. It could also explain the quakes shaking the surface of our planet's natural satellite. Astronomers have recently found out that Mars is seismically active. Mars quakes occur there on a regular basis. Scientists often discover strange things in space. Many of them look like blurry blobs. But there's one type of these blobs that doesn't look like any other known space body. The odd radio circles are only visible in radio telescopes. They aren't the remains of supernovae or a bizarre optical effect. Some astronomers go as far as to claim that they might be the throats of wormholes. Those are hypothetical tunnels between black holes. Fast radio bursts are blindingly bright bursts of radio waves. They pack as much energy as our sun produces in days, but last for mere milliseconds. Most of these fast radio bursts came from far, far beyond the Milky Way. But recently, astronomers have detected some originating in our home galaxy, and their source was a magnetar just 30,000 light years away from our planet. Any liquid floating in outer space forms itself into a sphere. This phenomenon also occurs in low Earth orbit. Not so long ago, scientists discovered that one of the most massive stars in the neighborhood just disappeared. It was a star 75 million light years away from Earth. 
Normally, it'd be too far away for astronomers to clearly see individual stars, but only unless they're huge. And the star we're talking about was enormous. It was shining 2.5 million times brighter than the sun. Astronomers saw the star for the last time in 2011. They decided to examine it more closely several years later, but it was already too late. The star had vanished. Such massive stars usually go out in an extremely bright supernova, but astronomers noticed nothing like that in this case. There's a theory that the star collapsed into a black hole without triggering a supernova first. It does occur among stars approaching the end of their lives, but very, very rarely. In billions of years, the universe is likely to expand so much that we won't be able to see any stars in the sky. All planets in the solar system emit radio waves. They're especially strong if we talk about Jupiter. This planet has the biggest and most powerful magnetic field. But astronomers couldn't detect any radio waves coming from a planet outside the solar system. That is, until 2020. The signal scientists recorded came from a gas giant, Tau Bootes. It's 51 light years away from our planet. Thanks to this signal, astronomers managed to find out a bit about the planet's magnetic field. And in the future, this will help to learn more about what's happening in the planet's atmosphere. Dwarf planet Haumea is further from Earth than Neptune. It's orbiting in the Kuiper Belt. That's a donut-shaped ring of ice objects circling the Sun. Elongated Haumea has two moons. A day on this dwarf planet lasts four Earth hours. All in all, this space body is rather bizarre. It's surrounded by thin rings that likely appeared as the result of an ancient collision. A star in the galaxy GSN 069 is likely to turn into a planet the size of Jupiter in the next trillion years. It might happen because of the star's regular encounters with a black hole. First, astronomers noticed unusual X-ray bursts that were strangely bright. They went off every nine hours. After studying this phenomenon for some time, the scientists realized it was a star moving in a unique orbit around a black hole. The dazzling flashes? It was the material getting slurped off the star's surface by the black hole. It turned out that over millions of years, the black hole had already transformed the red giant into a white dwarf. And the process isn't going to stop whatsoever. Astronomers have found some traces of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. On our planet, this gas, colorless and flammable, is often found where microbes live. No wonder a new theory suggests there might be life on Venus. But even if there was some life on the evening star, it could have only appeared in its atmosphere. Probably no living organism would be able to survive the planet's extreme environment. Venus's surface is extremely dry. There's no liquid water on the planet, and the pressure there is 90 times greater than that on Earth's surface. The temperatures often rise higher than 900 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt some metals. Imagine leaving your house one morning and seeing not one, but two stars shining in the sky. The first one is our good old sun, and the other is Jupiter. But how has a planet turned into a star? And what will now happen to Earth and its inhabitants? Before we find the answer to these urgent questions, we need to revise some things we know about Jupiter. The largest planet in the solar system is a gas giant, which means it's made up mostly of gases. Due to the pressure and temperature differences, these gases separate into layers. This creates those red and white bands that can be clearly seen from Earth. The temperatures at the top of Jupiter's atmosphere are insane. They can reach a whopping 1,340 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet also has an immense gravitational pull. In 1995, the Galileo probe reached the atmosphere of Jupiter and sliced it at a speed of 106,000 miles per hour. It survived the scorching temperatures and started its descent. It kept moving even when the temperatures suddenly dropped and the pressure, as well as the speed of the wind, increased. But 58 minutes and 97 miles into its exploration, things went downhill. The pressure of 23 atmospheres and still high temperatures finished the probe off. It was melted and then vaporized by the extreme heat. Now, if Jupiter suddenly decided to keep growing, it would eventually become a star, and its composition would allow this planet to do it. Once, a long, long time ago, Jupiter took most of the mass that was left after the formation of our Sun. 
That's how it ended up with more than twice the combined material of all other bodies in the solar system. And the planet's ingredients are the same as those of a star, mostly hydrogen and helium. Jupiter is just not massive enough to ignite. But what if it was? Then it would turn into another kind of celestial body, most likely a brown dwarf. In this case, it would have a minor effect on the orbits of the planets of our solar system, because brown dwarfs are more massive than planets, but not as massive as stars. A brown dwarf is usually 13 to 80 times the mass of Jupiter. It can only become a star if the pressure in its core gets high enough to start nuclear fusion. So let's imagine that it's happened, and Jupiter has become a real star. For example, a red dwarf. Red dwarfs are stars with masses around 7.5% to 50% of the mass of our sun. Red dwarfs are also hotter than brown dwarfs, their temperature can reach 6,380 degrees Fahrenheit. Our sun, by comparison, has a temperature of almost 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So, it means that the newly formed red dwarf will be far dimmer than the sun. And still, red dwarf Jupiter could prevent the inner planets from following their orbits, because they wouldn't be able to find a balance between the gravitational forces of the two stars. The planets would move either closer to the sun or closer to the newly formed red dwarf. If Earth chose the first option, our main star's insane temperatures would probably wipe all living beings off the face of the Earth in no time. If it was the second scenario, we'd probably freeze, since Jupiter, as a dim red dwarf, wouldn't be able to warm us up well enough. But there could be one more option. The inner planets could get thrown out of the solar system altogether. If Jupiter was a star, it would also greatly increase the amount of radiation the surface of Earth would receive. Our atmosphere would have to protect us both from the radiation coming from the Sun and from Jupiter's radiation. Red dwarfs are notoriously active. That's why Jupiter, just like the Sun, would most likely have frequent coronal mass ejections. This is a fancy expression for describing large clouds of electrically charged particles a star releases with a huge burst of speed. Even now, Jupiter has a significant impact on our planet. The gas giant is roughly 318 times as massive as Earth. And this also means it has an outsized pull on our planet. Its gravity can cause shifts in the orbit of our planet and climate swings every 400,000 years or so. When Jupiter's influence is the strongest, Earth usually has colder winters, hotter summers, and more intense periods of wetness and droughts. Also, if Jupiter turned into a red dwarf, its most prominent feature might probably disappear for good. I'm talking about the Great Red Spot. It's an enormous storm raging in the southern hemisphere of the gas giant. Its top parts tower more than five miles above the tops of the surrounding clouds. The storm is almost twice as wide as our planet. In 2017, NASA's Juno space probe managed to collect lots of data about the red spot. And it turned out that this monster of a storm went more than 200 miles down into the planet's atmosphere. That's 30 to 100 times deeper than any ocean on Earth. But these measurements are most likely imprecise, and the storm's true roots can be reaching even deeper. The great red spot is colder than the rest of the atmosphere. And keep in mind that Jupiter's temperatures are negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit in the upper cloud layers. On the other hand, the closer to the core, the hotter it gets. Mysteriously, the highest temperatures ever recorded on the gas giant occurred in the atmosphere right above the Great Red Spot. They were higher than the temperature of lava on our planet. Astronomers believe that the turbulence caused by the storm might produce gravitational and sound waves that can be responsible for the superheating. But the storm itself is warmer at the bottom than at the top. People have been watching the moving vortex on Jupiter for more than 150 years. Some time ago, astronomers predicted that it would gradually slow down and become smaller or disappear altogether. But that turned out not to be the case. After having analyzed all the data received with the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers were baffled to discover that the winds at the outer boundaries of the storm 
had actually picked up speed. The wind speed at the edges of the storm can reach a mind-boggling 400 miles per hour. That's faster than Earth's tornadoes. At the same time, if you found yourself at the center of the Great Red Spot, you wouldn't be too impressed. The winds there move way more slowly. And now, I have another what-if situation for you. What if Jupiter collided with the smallest star we know about? Today, these two space bodies are on a collision course. A spoiler, Earth might not survive such an encounter. Okay, meet this tiny red dwarf. It's the size of Saturn, and its gravity is around 300 times the gravity of our planet. It normally floats 600 light years away from Earth in a double star system. But today, for some inexplicable reason, it's broken all the laws of the universe and is rushing toward the biggest gas giant in our solar system. And even though this space guest is smaller than Jupiter, its mass is way greater, and its gravitational force soon starts to pull on the gas giant. The heat from the red dwarf, plus its powerful gravity, makes Jupiter grow in size. The planet's atmosphere starts to puff up because the gases that make up the planet begin to heat up and expand. Jupiter's atmosphere starts to leak into space toward the stellar visitor. Sometime later, the runaway gases form a bright hot ring around the red dwarf. This is a terrifying view, as if a black hole, a very bright one, has appeared inside the solar system. The star keeps tearing Jupiter apart, eating chunks of the gas giant. And soon, the red dwarf engulfs it completely. Sadly, Jupiter never stood a chance. Instead of the gas giant, we now have a red dwarf surrounded by a ring of hot gases. And we already know how badly it may end. The best thing about it is that this scenario is totally imaginary. Phew, thank goodness. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. <laughs> I have a question. Ugh. Why do you need sunglasses if the only light source in the solar system is you? Um, <coughs> excuse me. May I ask if I'm entitled to pension benefits? Mr. Sun, can you <coughs> chucked a couple of female pennants into our <coughs> system? I have no one to gossip with about new stars. Can I spend the night at my friend's? But he lives in a neighboring star system. And the night there is endless. I mean, he's just in the right now. And it's only one night. It seems that the sun is having an emotional burnout oh. and is going away. The sun is leaving? Mm -hmm. So I have a chance to take his place. Why would you take his place? It should be me! No, me! No, oh. me! No, oh. me! <clears throat> no, me! Stop. Stop! Oh, the confrontation of two giants? No need to argue. I propose a constructive debate. When the sun is gone, I will be the largest object of the soul. Hmm, Jupiter system. Vote for Jupiter! I'm sorry, but in order to form the Jupiter system, you will need to become a star. This requires a thermonuclear reaction. This is only possible if your mass increases by 80 times. Oh, I need a high calorie diet right now! Look at how wonderfully I rotate my ring. I can also help planets rotate around me. Vote for Saturn! I don't want to disappoint you, but unlike the sun, you don't have enough gravity to attract other planets. Your gravity is even weaker than Earth's. Uh, uh. Yes. It seems like it's time for someone to cancel their Marvel subscription. Okay, let's choose another tactic. I promise natural satellites to those who will vote for Jupiter. I have as many as 80 of them. And that's all? I have 82 companions. Vote for Saturn! And I have ice cream! Vote for Neptune! You seriously don't understand what I'm talking about? I have arranged this debate to show you that no one can compare with the sun. Without its heat, we will turn into ice balls. Without its gravitational pull, we will scatter across the universe. We need to stop the sun! Hmm? 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 H
Hmm. I'm sorry. I won't complain about global warming anymore. I promise that the attraction between us will always remain strong. And I'm ready to give you my most precious possession. My ring. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> and I have ice cream. <laughs> Boop it oh. up, <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Unprecedented solar activity? <laughs> <laughs> Mercury, hmm? Venus, Earth, <laughs> Mars, <laughs> Jupiter. Wait a minute, where's Jupiter? He's an old guy. What if he loses his way and starts orbiting another star? Our sun has oh. a losing a planet phobia. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> Go find Jupiter. Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, I know a shortcut for a black hole. Great! I need to get some samples for my research anyway! Mm. Look! They've definitely forgotten about their anti crater beauty routine! <laughs> Don't worry! Now we'll show you our beauty routine! <laughs> <laughs> I guess we found him! Hmm... Yep. I know nobody else who could produce such an impressive nebula. <laughs> hey, Sir Jupiter! Wake up, sir! Uh, 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 that wasn't me! You know, it's all my gaseous nature! No one cares about your gases. The question is why you're shirking your duties. Which are... Huh? Mm, orbiting the sun, of mm. course! Grrr. But I don't have to. Huh? Uh. Wait, wait, wait! I've got it here! Is your day the shortest in the solar system? Mm, yes, 9 hours 56 minutes! And your mass is the greatest of all the planets in the solar system! It is! I'm more than 300 times as massive as Earth, and more than twice as great as the mass of all of the planets combined! And you orbit the Sun! Uh, I don't! The Sun and me, we just orbit the same point in space! Huh? Uh, what? <laughs> Explain! Uh, you see, because of my great mass, the sun and me, we have a combined center of gravity. It's called the Barry Center. I pulled it, sorry about that, toward myself. And now we both orbit this oh. Barry Center. I, I orbit some Barry, Barry, oh, whatever. Well, at least Jupiter won't run away to orbit some other star. If this star isn't bigger than you are... Oh! of your new girlfriend! Hey, uh. this is the landscape of space! Ouch! Hmm. 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 Oh. Look around! It's dark! The guy does not understand that it is dark in space because there is nothing to reflect light. Simply put, there is a void between planets. Just like in his head. It's not dark on Earth. Ask her where she gets the light. <sighs> <sighs> Oh. Hmm. hmm. This is a great idea. This way, I can see the colorful landscapes of space. Oh. oh. Yes. The day has come when the girls fall for the smart guys. Oh. People are so <laughs> illogical. They created oh. electricity oh. to look at black paintings in the oh. light. Oh. <laughs> 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 hmm. Hmm. Mm. Uh, 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 hmm? What the? Puh! It's called electricity. With its help, it's light at night. And it's light during the day because the sun's rays are reflected from the particles in the atmosphere. What color we see depends on the reflection of light. But it's impossible to see this in space. <laughs> I can find color in this black space without you. <laughs> 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 You know that we are limited by the visible light spectrum? Oh. But through modern telescopes, the cosmos looks colored. <sighs> Sorry, it's all gases. Ugh. What? A telescope? 
That's what I need. Oh. <laughs> uh, you won't be able to see the colors of space anyway. Me? Your constant storms lift huge amounts of dust, oh. which reflects sunlight with a weak zodiacal glow. I need to run away from the sun as far as possible. Run, Mars! Run! If I escape from the sun, I will be faster than the speed of light. <laughs> oh, kids! Don't listen to him, Charon! Sleeping with a bear? Are you two billion years old? Actually, I'm four and a half! Hmm, <laughs> bye, old boy! Did you hear that? I'm an old boy. Hmm? Oh, oh. oh, wow! Wow! Oh. No one has ever seen such a colorful beauty as I have. Uh, maybe we should tell him about the Northern Lights. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have oh, one of our finest exhibits. 